Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking black portal effect using Adobe After Effects and Photoshop. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we need to generate our background. So I've just gone to the trusty Adobe Firefly and I've just searched for a large screen with a structure in the middle of the city and I've put the filters of industrial and film noir. So it's like a little bit of black and white and industrial and I'm pretty happy with the outputs that I have gotten. It did take me a little bit of time to get to this so please choose which one uh, you like. Uh, and then once you're ready with it, let's just download it and put it into Adobe Photoshop. So here we are in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, the first thing I did before importing this is just make sure that this is a 4K resolution and then I put my image in here because I am going to be using 4K in After Effects. Once you have it in there, all you need to do is grab the rectangular marquee tool and basically make a cutout of that section there. So all you have to do is highlight it, press delete and then all you have to do is unlock the background layer, move it to the trash can and now we are good to go. So all you have to do is just save that as a PSD document and let's take that to After Effects. So here we are in After Effects and the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new composition. So for this composition, I'm going to be running with a 4K document. So 3840 by 2160, 30 FPS at a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once we have that, the next thing that I want to do is import my Photoshop document. So all I have to do is go File Import. And when you import your file, you want to change it from footage to composition and you want to have it as an editable layer styles. Press OK. Once you have that, then there's a folder in here with your document in there. And if we zoom out, it should fit perfectly. If it doesn't fit perfectly, you can always press S for scale to, you know, put in the right um, dimensions and things like that. Cool. So now that we have that, we can take the eye off that because we don't really need it for now. Now we have to start to make the actual portal. So in order to do that, what we are going to do is we are going to create a new solid. All right, and we'll just make sure that our um, Photoshop document remains at the top of everything. But on this new solid, we are going to search for the effect called cell pattern. For the cell pattern, I'm gonna change it to crystals HQ. I'm gonna press invert. I'm gonna change the contrast to, let's say 154. I'm going to change the disperse to one point, let's say 1.5. I'm going to change the size to 135 so that makes it a little bit bigger and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to animate this offset. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I'm on the, my first uh, frame, hit that uh, stopwatch for offset, move to the end of my composition and then just put a value of let's say 1000. You can see that it's moving from right to left fairly slowly and that's pretty good. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up our tiling options. So we're going to enable the tiling and we're going to keep it at four and four. So I think that is all fine in there. The next thing we're going to add in here is transform. So the first thing we need to do for transform is uncheck uniform scale. And let's just bump up this uh, height to 200 and this, uh, the width to 400. Now that we have that, now it looks a little bit different and we are going to put in another effect. So the next effect that we will put in on this layer is going to be the wave warp effect. So the wave warp effect, what we need to do is we need to change it from sine to square. We need to change the wave uh, height to 50 and then the width to let's say 135 and the direction is going to be 50 with the wave speed being 0.1 and so now what's going to happen is and i have to lower the resolution a bit now you're going to have these bars that are going across as well so that's looking fairly interesting and now we're going to take it even 
further. So what we're going to do is we are going to create another new solid. All right. And so put this as number two and we'll just put it uh, underneath our Photoshop document. And we're going to do pretty much the same kind of effects. Really, we're going to start off with the cell pattern. We're going to change it back to crystals HQ. We're not going to invert it this time. We're going to leave it as that. We're going to change the um, we're going to animate the offset over here. So we'll start at 1920 over there. But this time when we go to the end, we're going to change it to 1500. So now we're going to have a even slower kind of uh, animation happening there. Then what we are going to do is we're going to enable the tiling. But this time we're going to change it to uh, nine vertical cells and nine horizontal cells. So now we have that in there just like that. We're going to also add another transform effect where we're going to untick the uniform scale and change the height to 200 and the width to 415. And we are going to change the skew axis to 45 degrees. So now we have this other kind of uh, look in there, which uh, is actually looking pretty nice. So the final effect in here that we are going to add is a tint effect. So if we go in and we put a tint effect in, I'm just gonna change this uh, to maybe a lighter gray, like maybe something like that. I think that looks pretty cool. And then what we are going to do is we are going to create our adjustment layers. So in the first adjustment layer that we are going to create, and I'll just put it underneath the Photoshop document, I'm going to add some turbulent displays. So turbulent displays, I'm going to change the amount to 120 and the we would change the size to let's say 80. All right, cool. Now we are also going to animate that as well. So if we hold option and click on that evolution settings, if we write time times, let's say 40. Now we're going to have this oh, cool kind of wiggle thing that's happening in there. So that's looking pretty good. All right, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create another adjustment layer. And in this adjustment layer, we are going to put in levels. So if we go to levels and we change this import black and we find something that is uh, suitable for us, so maybe something, you know, it depends how dark you want to, something like that, but we can always come back and we can play around with that. So that's looking pretty cool. The next adjustment layer that we're going to put on this is now going to be some CC radial fast blur. And what we are going to do is we are going to change that to brightest and we're going to leave that at 50. So that's fine. And then another adjustment layer. And in this one, we are going to add some CC glass. Now CC glass, you know, there's a lot of options in here, but basically if we change the bump map to none, we change the uh, softness to five, the height to 100 and the displacement to zero. So now you're getting some really cool kind of effects. If we go into a light and change the light type to a point light, and we change the, uh, the height to, let's say, uh, 96. And we change the light intensity, we bring that up a bit. So now we have a little bit more kind of brightness in there. So that looks uh, pretty cool. And then if we go into the shading, and now this is where we can you know, really play around with some of this stuff. So the ambient, I'm gonna drop to about 14. Uh, the diffuse, I'll bring up to about 60. Um, the specular, I'll bring up to maybe 100. And the roughness, you know, depending on how much of that glass you want to come through. So I only want a little bit, so I'm just gonna change that. 
and then you can you can really make some really cool effects in there with the metal uh, as well so if you go through and you know preview some of this stuff you know now you've got that real cool you know effect happening there so yeah so like look you can you know play around with some of the settings and get like some really unique effects but we are going to change a few things over here so on the second layer for this uh cell pattern what i'm going to do is i'm just going to change that to lighten all right so now we're going to see the effects of the other cell pattern underneath so that looks pretty cool and then what we are going to do is we are going to change some of the effects uh, also in here. So the modes. So if we go to the uh, radial fast blur, if we change that to, let's say, pin light. So now that brings it down a bit. So that's looking pretty cool. And then also on the CC glass uh, one as well, if we change the mode to let's try out uh, maybe different now we've got this cool kind of effect in there and now when you go back and you play around with some of these things like for example the metal you can see what the metal actually is doing so even if the if you want to increase the roughness as well now you've got a whole lot of things are uh, happening as well and even the diffuse uh settings over there so Go back and play around with some of these things. And if you want it a bit darker as well, you can change the ambient. So maybe we can have like something like really dark and, you know, unique like that. Even the specular as well, but I quite like the specular fairly high. So yeah, so now you can play around with some of the, the other settings as well, like the, the line height, um, but I'm pretty happy with that. And the light intensity, how much light you actually want on there but <clears throat> i'm pretty happy with that but definitely play around with some of that stuff now you've got that really cool kind of metallic kind of look so now the last thing that we can put in here is another adjustment layer and in here if we just add some uh curves in here and we can play around with something like this like a little s bend where we're just taking away a little bit of that light so you can go and do it however you like so i'm probably going to stick with something like that and yeah i think that looks pretty nice so now if we put back our eye or our photoshop document so now you can see what we have in there and now we've got that really cool moving portal effect cool so now once we have that uh, the final effect that you can put on here is another new adjustment layer on top of the Photoshop document and if we add some noise, so if we add maybe like about 10% noise, all right, that will tie it all together and I think that's about it. And yeah, and that's about it for this uh, Black Portal tutorial. So that is how you create this cool looking portal effect using After Effects and a little bit of Photoshop. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you guys in the next video.